Welcome to Science. Time to take the next step in tectonics, which is going to be figuring out what's going on deeper within the Earth. With page 10 of the reference tables, the inferred properties of Earth's interior. And inferred is an interesting word to use here. If you watch the first video I sent um, from today's post, it shows you how deep we've been able to dig down into the Earth. So when it comes to figuring out what's going on with all these layers, it's never been directly observed. That video showed you that even our deepest hole barely makes it, barely scratches the surface, really. So how have we been able to figure out where all these layers are, what they're made of, all of that? We've had to infer, make an inference. And we do that by following earthquake waves as they pass through these layers. As they go through different densities, they bend. As they go through different uh, phase changes, they might bounce to. We're going to talk about the outer core being a liquid. This boundary between this soft solid, this liquid, and a uh, harder solid, really. As earthquake waves hit that, they do different things. And as they work their way through the Earth, they do different things. And by setting up earthquake monitors, seismograms all over the planet, we've been able to figure that out. We've been able to figure out where all this stuff is. Um, the corollary I always use is that, hey, my biology teacher told me that there's a whole bunch of bones in there. I've never seen one of my bones. How do I know that there's actually bones in there? Well, sometimes if you hurt yourself, you go to the emergency room and they put waves through your body and the way that those waves hit or get absorbed or reflect or refract gets detected on the other side and they have an image of your bones, an x-ray, right? So if you've ever had one of those, it's basically the same philosophy. An earthquake happens, let's say here, the earthquake waves go through the whole planet, not just across the surface. And when different seismometers pick them up in different parts of the planet, we've been able to figure out what's going on with all these layers. Okay. The very outside is what we're going to worry about. I think I'll do a video for that tomorrow rather than making this one too long. We're going to worry a little bit more tomorrow about this difference between lithosphere and asthenosphere. For today, let's be a little broader and say the major layers that we got to deal with. And then towards the top here, that gets a little trickier. Here's how you're going to use this reference table. We can tell the pressure anywhere within the planet, and we can tell the temperature anywhere within the planet. In fact, we can also tell the depth, or if we do a little subtraction, the thickness of each of these layers. So I'll start with an easy one. If I were to ask you about the boundary between the inner core and the outer core, say what's going on there in terms of all the conditions. What you would do, and normally I have people like color all these, but what you would do is follow that line between the inner core and the outer core down into the graph. It's gonna hit right there. And then you come over and it tells you that the pressure would be three million atmospheres. Take the pressure of the atmosphere squishing in your head right now, multiply that times three million, and that's about what it is there. Tiny touch higher, but that's okay. Keep following that line down and if you get to the temperature line, wherever it falls on this black temperature line, so we'll do that. We'll come over, I'd say ballpark 6,200 degrees or so degrees Celsius. Or you come all the way down and we want to know how deep within the planet it is. Right about there, a little bit above 5,000 kilometers. And then again, for the thickness thing, if you wanted to say how thick is the outer core, well, it goes from about 5,000 to about 3,000. So it looks like it's about 2,000 kilometers thick, plus a tiny bit there and a tiny bit there, maybe 2,200 kilometers thick. All right, so this is going to get you through most of these types of problems, and I think I'll put up some practice stuff for this for you guys today. Um, one trick we should mention while we're here, again, we'll do the surface, the near-surface stuff later. The outer core is actually one place where the temperature is above the melting point. And if the temperature is hotter than the point it needs to be, you know, the melting point, what phase does that make it? If you've got a glass of water and it's above the melting point of zero degrees Celsius, like 20 degrees Celsius, then it's a liquid, right? In this phase, in this layer, the outer core, it's above the melting point. So the outer core is indeed a liquid. 
And melting points are all dependent on pressure too. I mean, our melting points or boiling points all change if you go to different pressures. So if you put a lot of pressure on something, you can change all those values. So this is why it changes as you go down and you get to higher and higher, higher, higher pressures. Um, but eventually right here, and this is really what defines the difference between the inner core and the outer core, which are chemically similar, is that at this point, now the melting point is higher than the temperature. Or if you want to say it the other way, maybe easier, the temperature is lower than the melting point, meaning that that is a solid. So outer core is a liquid. That tends to come up in questions all the time, which is why I mentioned it. So maybe you want to write liquid right in there. The convection, the rapid churning of all this iron in here is what produces Earth's magnetic field. Another question that comes up once in a while, that wouldn't be a thing if we didn't have this liquid outer core. And the last thing I'll mention is that over here, it tells us the density of these layers. And it doesn't do it perfectly for this would like increase as you go. So it goes anywhere from 3.4 to 5.6 through the whole entire mantle. Anywhere between those values for the outer core, anything between those values for the inner core, and that is in grams per centimeter cubed. And that little bit can be helpful. But again, I think we'll do near surface stuff tomorrow. For now, we're gonna I'm gonna put out some questions, practice some of those guys, how to use this chart a little bit. And we'll uh, eventually turn that into some sort of little quiz. But that should do it for today. Welcome to your science.